So today we're going to cover exercise 219, and it's really, it's a buildup of what you did last class in 218, and I, I was just reading through the handout, and it refers to exercise 216 and 217, that should be 218 and 219, I shifted the order around and I didn't catch that before I printed it. Um, it's very much along the same lines of what we've done previously, uh, the difference this time is we're going to use actual background imagery uh, so that we get clouds and sky and all that sort of thing. Uh, there are some quirks about it as you get used to it, but I think ultimately the results are, are generally much more positive than even just using a tech sky um, built into Rhino. Uh, so I, I, I wanted to kind of show you some example images. Um, one of the, the big challenges with HDRI background images is finding the right ones and not having to pay for them. There's a lot of people who spend a lot of time to make really good ones and charge money for them. Um, I'm obviously not requiring you to buy any uh, in the class. There are plenty of free ones out there. If you do Google search, you'll be able to find some of them. I've, I've linked to a few of them, and a few of them are actually new ones that I just downloaded today um, that I think are kind of, uh, kind of good and could turn out well, this cloud being one of them. Uh, basically, what we're looking at in an HDRI image is a specially formatted image file. This is the preview of the image, not the actual HDRI image. Uh, that contains a lot more information than just a photograph. It contains a lot of information about varying light settings within a, uh, a scene. And not to get into the too technical side of things, in 135 I talk about the technical side of things, but it involves uh, shooting several images at different exposures and then merging those images together to, to give a bigger depth of field to the color. Uh, these are all done in full spherical panoramas. So this edge of this photograph lines up with this edge of the photograph. You would curl it around behind you. Likewise, the bottom edge here uh, curls in on itself. The top edge curls on top of itself. That's why there's a lot of distortion right up here at the very top of the image. Um, so I have a variety of these to kind of show you really quickly. Um, depending on kind of the scene you're going for, the look you're going for, you're going to get different results. Uh, obviously, this is a much lighter sky, a little bit different time of day, closer to noon, um, depending on, obviously, where it is. Um, this one, you've got a lot of background imagery, a lot of trees that would end up showing up, but it's a deep blue sky, and you've got the sun there, kind of late afternoon or early morning, depending. Um, this one here, again, a little bit more cloudy. Um, you've got a few of these light poles. Those are going to be problematic because they're going to compete with your skyscrapers when you put this image in the background. So it will work depending on what angle you're shooting your camera from. Uh, you just have to be aware of that. Uh, let's see, I have another one here. Yeah, this is another one here. Uh, kind of a more generic background, no clouds. Um, so it really depends on what you're after, right at you know sunset or sunrise, depending. Um, and so you're gonna, your lighting settings, your shadows and stuff are going to be much longer. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to use one or two of these images. I'm going to do a couple different demonstrations uh, as background imagery. And then we're going to make our lighting conditions for our particular rhino scene match up with these photos. Uh, because it wouldn't work to have the background photo and then to have the sun in rhino pointing the opposite direction. So we need to be consistent about it. And I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to start first with a brand new Rhino file. Um, for what you guys are doing, I'm asking you to do this inside of your skyscraper file that you used last class. Uh, that's what you're going to use as your final rendering. But I think sometimes it's easier in the initial stages when you're figuring this out to have a simplified version for practice. And so I'm going to start with the simplified version, and then I'll show you in the, uh, the skyscraper file kind of how it works at, at that stage of the game. Uh, so I have this nice Rhino file. And I need to set up a few things to get ready for this, this rendering. So I'll work primarily in the perspective view. And I need a ball. I need a sphere. Uh, excuse me, it's right here. Uh, to work with. And I want it to be perfectly round. So we can start at 0, 0.00, that's fine. And the size of it really doesn't matter. Right? Let's switch from wireframe into shaded mode so that I can see it. And then I want to make sure that it's sitting on top of uh, the ground instead of being below the ground. So let me go ahead and move. And again, this is not a precise science. We just need it to be close. And so I have that nice little ball. And then I'm going to insert a V-Ray infinite plane below it. There it is. And so we have this nice scene that has a ball and an infinite plane. Okay. The infinite plane should remain white, so the default material is just fine. The material for the ball needs to be a highly reflective material 
ideally chrome because we want it to look like a mirror because we need to look in it and see what's happening in the environment around us. Um, and so I can make chrome from scratch or I can go ahead and load chrome as a material. Um, I'll go ahead and load it for right now. It is available on the course website uh, and on that download package. So if you downloaded that in the beginning of the semester, you probably have it already. Um, let me get in here. And it should be under metal. Chrome. Uh, and I want a just a standard chrome. I don't want it to be blurry. I don't want it to be matte finished. I want like a nice shiny chrome. So I'll go ahead and load that. And I'm going to apply this directly to the sphere. So I'll right click and say apply material to selection. And now I have that applied onto this. Okay. So if I were to render it right now in kind of the default settings, right, I get a rendering that looks like this. I have a, a sky that is completely black. right? I have a ground that's completely white. Make sense so far? Yeah? Okay, so what I want is I want there to be a sun. And I'm going to go ahead and establish the sun um, and, and get that part of it going. So let me go ahead and go to my um, sun. I'm going to uncheck manual control. And again, this is what you did last class. It's kind of the same thing. We're going to pick San Francisco. as our location and time of day I still tend to pick early in the morning so nine between 9 and 10 ish is generally pretty good if I was going to use an HDRI that was closer you know if I was looking at these images I'd want to pay a little bit of attention to what the image looks like so this one right is probably about 3 in the afternoon judging by the position of the sun ish maybe a little bit later um, or it could be in the morning. Again, it doesn't matter because we're not paying attention to north and south and, and whatever. We just need general position. If I was looking at, say, this one, uh, this one's hard because the sun isn't really seen. It's probably right about there or so. So, you know, mid-morning, mid-afternoon seems pretty reasonable. Um, see, this one, same thing. You know, maybe a little bit later, maybe 10, 1030, something like that. So this is the one that I'm going to try to use. So maybe I'll adjust my time of day to be a little bit later. I'll go up to like 10 or so. Okay. Then I'll go ahead and say okay and I need to place the sun into the scene. And again it doesn't really matter where I place it, it just needs to go somewhere where I can see it. Okay. So now, remember I just put that sun in which means that if I render everything's going to be really really bright because of that sun. I want to go ahead and go into my options and turn on my physical camera. And we'll set that at 200. And let's see if we render. Yeah, we're going to get a nice shadow, right? And we're going to get that mirror ball again, reflecting mostly white and then the black sky. Okay? So now it's a matter of bringing in the photograph that I'm going to use as my background and seeing what happens and how it lines up. So, as we've done before in the V-Ray options, if I go to environment, this is the same tab that we worked with last class. Uh, I'm going to click on the mapping just like I did last class. And I have two different things that are happening here. And I may not have been that clear prior to this, but now it's starting to be important to look at this. I have two things. One, I have something called a reflection or a refraction background. And then I have something called a global illumination or GI skylight. Okay? Those are two different things that are working in my general lighting conditions. The background is just what the sky looks like. Okay? So it doesn't have anything to do with the lighting in the scene. It's just when I expose my scene and I look at the sky, what is it going to look like? Right? which is why we've gone in and it looks black right now when I render. Okay, So this is the first one I'm going to adjust and I'll click on the map here and instead of doing text sky which I did last time I'm going to do text bitmap because I wanted to actually insert an image and then I'm going to go to my flash drive and I'll uh, go to my resources and into my V-Ray HDRI images uh, and the one I'm going to use is in here, and I'm looking for a file that's called .hdr, right, which is the high dynamic range image, and I'll go ahead and say open. If you don't have one already on your flash drive, if you go to the course website, and you go to today's exercise, it will be available to download right here. Okay, So you can download one, you don't have to, to find it on your own. Though, long term, you're going to want to start to find these and collect these and, and use certain ones. I have ones that I use more and more often, 
um, because they seem to work really nicely in certain scenes, you'll start to collect them and do the same thing. So I've gone ahead and I've loaded the file in here. And if I click on preview, we're not going to see much. We'll see a little bit of my image. Okay. But if I scroll down here, this part becomes important. So I'm going to call the way, come all the way down to where it says UVW. Right? By the way, there is a tutorial for this. I probably should have mentioned that earlier. Um, it's V-Ray 8.24. So if you miss the step, you can come back. And uh, there it is, HDRI. And this walks through how to do this. Okay. So I have it under UVW. And instead of having a general channel, I want it to be an environment. So I'm going to change it to UVW environment there. And I'm also going to say that the mapping type is spherical because it's an unrolled panorama. It's going to be a spherical. So I check that as spherical, right? And then I go ahead and say, OK. And so that's then addressed the background image. So what is the sky going to look like? If I do a quick render, right? We're going to look into our little mirror ball here. And we're going to see that instead of seeing black, which I saw before, I'm starting to see the sky and the clouds and that sort of thing. Make sense so far? Okay. So that's just the background, however. Above that, I have something called GI Skylight. And this is the global illumination in the scene that's provided by reflected light. And so if I have a sky that's not perfectly clear, that has clouds and stuff, there is light that reflects off of those clouds right, and shines down to us. So it's kind of like if I were to walk outside right now, it's a perfectly clear day, right? And I were to look at my shadow, my shadow is blocking the sun's light. That's why I have a shadow. But it's not pitch black. I can still see some of the detail in my shadow. Right? You guys know what I'm talking about, right? Okay. That's because there's other light. It's reflected off other things. It's reflected off the environment. It's reflected off the atmosphere and the little water particles that are up in the sky somewhere. Right? That light is still illuminating my scene. So it's more than just the sun. And so to mimic that, in V-Ray, we have something called a skylight. And this skylight needs to be the same image or a blurred version of the same image. Ideally, it's a blurred version, but not all, every HDRI comes with a blurred version. So I'm going to use the same um, file that I used before. So I'm going to pick text bitmap, and I'm going to pick my same HDR file. I'll go ahead and say open. And I'll again scroll down to UVW, and I'll change from the general channel to being an environment. And I'll change the mapping to make sure it says spherical. Okay. Then I'll go ahead and say OK. And once I have those two things set, right, I can now come back to my scene and I can do a quick render and we can have a look at it. Okay. So we're seeing, and I can see this probably a little bit better than you, but I'm seeing a sky right, that's being reflected in my mirror ball. I may need to adjust my physical camera settings slightly. All right, let's lighten that up a little bit. Try that. See if we can see a little bit more. A little bit better. You know, I might try to lighten it even more for you guys on the projector. There you go. You guys can see a little bit more of it. Okay? So, I have a problem. Okay? If I look down at this mirror ball, Right, the reflection, the sun, or the brightest part in the clouds, is exactly the wrong direction. It's 180 degrees from where the shadow is being cast by my ball. Right, so that doesn't work. We need those two to match up. So I'm going to do a, a, a render. Instead of in the perspective view, I'm going to do a render in the top view, looking down on my object. So there it is. Right, and if I render this, this will be even more obvious. Okay. So here's my rendering, looking da straight down on my ball. Right? There's the bright patch that is the sun. Right? Here's my shadow. This needs to be rotated over to being right here for it to match up nicely with my um, existing environment. So I'm going to go back to my um, V-Ray options. I'm going to go into my environment. And I'll work with just the background first to get that dialed in. And then I'll change the GI to match. Okay? So we'll look here at the reflection. I'll click on this M. And I'm going to come down here again to the UVW section. And I've got rotation. I've got horizontal rotation. Now, I said it was about halfway off. So that would be 180 degrees. 
So I'll type in 180 in my horizontal rotation, and I'll go ahead and say OK, and then I'm going to re-render this little scene. Okay, And so we should have the sky flip its direction. Do you guys see how that passed? Right, it's now over here. It's not quite right. It's probably a little bit further. So let me go ahead and go back to my V-Ray options, and let's go a little bit more with this rotation. And this is really, it's a guessing game. You start to learn, based on your conditions, the more times you use one of these, what the typical rotations are for a particular HDRI. Uh, but it, it's a little bit of a guessing game when you go through it. You've got to do a few test renders to, to check on it. Um, so let's try 200. I'll say OK. And then let me render it again. Oh, wrong direction. So I did it at 200. Let's go 160. There we go. And so I'm trying to find that bright patch that represents the sun in this scene being directly opposite where the clouds would be. Does that kind of make sense for what I'm doing? OK, so once I have this established, right, I'm going to go back to my option editor, and I'm going to make sure the skylight matches. So I did it at 160, and I'll change the horizontal rotation here to 160 as well. I'll say OK, and I'll go ahead and close this. Now, if I were to change my scene, let's look in my perspective view. And let me go ahead and add a few objects just for, for reference here. Something like that. Right, I get this nicely set up. If I go to render, I'm going to get my objects nicely, and I'm going to get sky in the background. It's a little bit dark right now. Let me adjust my camera angle to be a little bit further away so we get a little bit more sky. Something like that. So where before we had sky, now we're getting, or uh, before we had just color, gradient, we're actually starting to get some sky. Sky. Unfortunately, the sky is way, way, way too dark. So we need to make an adjustment for that as well. So I'll go back to my options, right? And I'm going to mess with these values now. The skylight can stay the same, but this background, I need to make it lighter. So I'm going to increase this number to make it lighter. So we'll try maybe 5. And I'll go ahead and oops, render again. And now my sky is significantly lighter. And we're starting to get a good... Uh, background image for my particular scene. Okay? If I took it a step further and I assigned glass to uh, these, these buildings here, if I went to my materials, let me go ahead and load material. And let me quickly texture map it. Go ahead and render it. We can see here again. I'm getting a lot of reflection of like uh, you know the white ground, and there's there's some of it that's not working. But as we start to see this rendering out, we're going to see a good patch of what the sky looks like in reflection, and it's going to start to feel much more like real glass. Does that make sense? Okay. So uh, this may still be a little bit dark. My texture mapping might be off, but we're starting to see a lot of the sky, clouds, and that sort of thing reflected in the glass, which adds to that realism uh, for what we're trying to do. Okay, so I now have this in the background, and it matches up with my sunlight, which is the important thing. So if I were to switch my scene and do a render from this angle, we'd see a different part of the sun and a different part of the sky. Okay, now, I told you there were some quirks about this. Okay. My, my ground plane right now is a perfectly flat horizontal plane, and the HDRI that I'm using, right, if we go back and look at it, right, has a little bit of stuff right there on the horizon. L luckily, it's really far away. 
which is good, which means it's really small. But if I have a perfectly flat plane going to the horizon, right, there's going to be a point at which this is showing up. I'm seeing a little bit of detail of buildings and that sort of thing, which might not be what I'm really after. right? If that's showing up, we need to have some buildings or something in front of it to cover it up. right? There are some HDRIs that are better at trying to go completely to the horizon. There's people that have done edits in Photoshop that make it go all the way down to the horizon. But that's something that we have to be a little bit aware of uh, when we're using these files. Um, certainly, if it had something like a big light pole or something in the foreground, it would be sticking up above everything and, and not look so good. OK, so I told you I was going to repeat this whole process on my skyscraper scene, but I wanted to go through it at least once so you could kind of see how it works. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and open up my skyscraper scene. from last class. Perfect. So I have my skyscraper scene open. And when I create these uh, temporary objects, my, my infinite plane, my sphere, and I'm going to do these renderings, I really want it to be on its own layer, something that I can work with later on. So I already have an environment layer. I'm going to create a sub-layer that is called sphere. And I'll put on that layer my little circle that I'll use as my guide. So once again, we'll create the sphere. Let me make sure that that's the active layer. There we go. All right, we can do it right here. Again, size doesn't really matter. It just needs to be there. All right. I'm going to go ahead and turn off everything except my sphere. Right? I already had my sun from last class established. Let me go ahead and add in an infinite plane. There it is. Sometimes the infinite plane may be hard to see. Uh, Select objects. Yeah, it's way over here. Okay. I don't know if it lines up correctly, so I'm going to go ahead and move it so that it lines up nicely with my sphere. Something like that. Okay. Now I can look at my sphere. Let me zoom selected. All right. I have my sun already established. Just because it's on the corner, remember it's infinite plane, it doesn't matter where it is. Okay. And I'm going to switch into that top view, and I'll zoom selected so I'm looking down on my object. And if I were to render it right now, oh, let me change my oh. I need to just strip down a few settings so I don't have quite the high resolution render. So bear with me for a second. Okay. While I'm waiting for this to come back, I want to talk a little bit about the trajectory of the class and where we're going and what we're trying to cover still. All right, you can go away. All right, let me go back to my options. Let me go back to my output. All right, we'll drop the size down a little bit. Um, my camera setting at 200 is probably OK uh, for right now. We'll leave that. And then let me go ahead and go into my options. We'll come back to the trajectory. I'll get to it. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and instead of having my text sky under environment, I'm going to load in one of those HDRI images. So let's go to the background first. And I'm going to choose bitmap instead. And I'm going to pick, I'll pick the same one for right now. Actually, let's pick a different one just for fun. Right, let's pick this one. And I'll go ahead and say OK. Pick the same one here. Oops. It's going to be not text guy, but bitmap. Alright, 
there it is. So I'll go ahead and say okay. I've got both of those loaded in now. And so now, if I zoom on my little sphere and I do my render, bear with me for a second. Okay, so again, while I'm waiting this, I'll talk trajectory of where we're going a little bit. So, you guys remember that next week is spring break, which means you're not here. That's a good thing. I'm not here either. That's also a good thing, right? <laughs> but when we get back, as is the case always with spring break, uh, it means that we don't have that much time left in the semester, and we have to kind of get on our A-game about making this happen, okay? Weird lighting conditions here. We'll see if we can improve it. Okay, I need to improve my... Uh, my um, settings a little bit. So I'll come back to that. Um, anyway, spring break, right? We come back. We don't have that much time left. We have like a month and a half left or so, which means we have two days. Uh, we have like 12 days of class left, something like that, right? So it's not that much. We've got a lot of ground to cover in terms of where we're going. So you remember a couple weeks ago I asked you to start on your final project, right? If you slacked off a little bit, didn't do that much, now is the time to work on it, right? Because we won't have a lot of time in class for you to work on it, right? We're going to be dealing with environmental conditions. I want to teach you guys about artificial lighting, right? How to add lighting to scenes, night renderings. There's a lot of ground to cover. So the more detailed your model is for your final project, the better, right? Thicknesses of walls, thicknesses of windows, double panes of glass, that kind of stuff is really important because it'll make your, your ultimate renderings and stuff that much better. So try to make sure you have that stuff ready. Find furniture that you want to put in the scene, put that stuff in, right? All of that helps, right? Because I'd rather spend time doing lighting and rendering environments than having you waste all your time modeling things, right? So the modeling should be almost over. You can, of course, change it, right? But it's something to be aware of. Okay, so uh, I'm not getting the reflection because I didn't assign chrome as the material, right? So we need to go back to my ball, right? We need to go to materials and we need to load in chrome. So let me go ahead and load material. Let me go to my metal, chrome, and then I'm going to assign it, apply material to selection. And then I'm also going to un uncheck my um, network render because I think it'll speed up on, on this kind of a render not to have it have to go out to all the computers. All right, so as we look down at the scene, we see that there's the shadow, but we're also seeing that the sky really isn't showing up uh, well at all. So let me go back and make some adjustments. Uh, first thing, we'll go to the environment. Let's increase this. Uh, let's go 20. Let's see if we can get it to show. Ah, I made a mistake. You guys didn't catch me. Okay. Um, on the map, I never told it that it was an environment. So I need to make sure it says environment, and I make sure it's spherical. And I need to do the same thing for the GI skylight. See, even I make mistakes, right? So make sure it's an environment. Make sure it's spherical. I'll say OK. Go ahead and render it. And now we have a nice view of that sky and what that sky looks like. Right? Remember, our shadow is a little bit long. Now, this particular one is probably a little bit closer to noon uh, than it is to the time that I have it set. So it wouldn't hurt me to modify the sun a bit. So let me take the sun. I'm going to go to Properties, Light, Modify Sun, uncheck Manual Control, right? We get where I was, let's go to San Francisco, and let's scroll back up here a little bit, and I want to go a little bit later, something like this, the day is close enough, right? We'll go a little bit later, closer to noon, and that's then updated. If I go to Render, My shadow position has changed slightly. It's also gotten shorter because it's a little bit later in the day. Okay. 
The sun here, however, is still too far around this way. So I need to rotate the sun back over in this direction. Okay? So I'm going to go to my options, and I'm going to go to my environment, and again go to the background, and I'm going to change the rotation of this. Horizontal. Uh, let's try 135. I'll go ahead and say OK. And we'll render it and have a look. Okay, it's closer. It's actually pretty darn close. It might be a little bit less. So instead of 135, maybe I'll do 125. Yeah, there we go. Now, obviously, I've had a little bit more practice at guessing at what the rotations are going to be. Uh, but again, you just play around with it a little bit. You'll get there. Okay, so now I have the sky. It's looking pretty good. Once I have that stuff established, right, I can come back to, remember I created the sphere and the infinite plane both on the sphere layer. I can switch over to a different layer, turn off the infinite plane and the sphere, and then we can go back to my view. So let me go to set view, perspective two. I can turn back on my model, turn back on my building pad, and then back on my skyscraper. Right? Uh, I did switch my view, and we're going to talk at length about view. I switched it down to being a 22 millimeter, so I got a little bit more uh, in my scene. Then I'm also going to switch and give myself a much taller rendering because it's not going to fit. So I'll go to output. Oops. And I'm going to change this so that the width, uh, we'll maybe leave the width at 600, and I'll do my height at maybe 2,000. Right? So it's a taller, skinnier render when I do the render. Hopefully I'll get the top of my building in that. I might have to come back and adjust it again a little bit later. Okay? So I have those things set up. And you know, in part four I tell you to, to turn on different channels. I don't think you need the channels right now, so we'll skip that part. Uh, so that's established. Um, I've got my sun. I've got my environment ready to go. Uh, let me just double check to make sure I have everything. Right, my physical camera is already set. We're double checking that at 200. That's good. All right. So now it's a matter of going ahead and rendering. Now, since we're starting to deal with environments, bigger maps, lighting conditions, and that sort of things, now's the time where we really want to start network rendering. And so not all of you have done network rendering before, but I want to walk you through that part of it as well. Uh, it's under the system rollout here, and there's something called distributed rendering. We need to check the box for on, for distributed rendering. And then under hosts here, we're going to click on this little three dot button. And we see that I already have a bunch because I loaded them from last time. But you're going to click on the find servers button. And when you do that, it's going to go out and try to find unused servers. It's going to say, oh, there's five unused servers. Would you like to add them? Right? And they'll show up somewhere down here at the bottom and you can go ahead and check the boxes to add them. Once you've checked the boxes, and it, I know it's a little bit tedious to go through and actually check all these boxes. All right, there's no harm in checking everything. There, You're going to click on the resolve servers, which is going to match up the server with an IP address, which is just how we're going to find it. Right? Then you're going to go ahead and say OK. And it's going to try to send out the render job and borrow other people's computers okay, while you do it, which is a good idea. Now, this distributed rendering is actually set for this lab, 124 and 116. So there's 90 computers that theoretically can join into the distributed rendering. Okay? What happens, however, is you guys have probably seen this. When you first start up your computer, there's this little command line thing that shows up. Right? It's supposed to start up minimized so you don't really notice it, but it's down here in the taskbar. And a lot of people see it and say, what is this? And they just close it. Okay? If you close it, that computer is no longer part of the distributed rendering farm. Okay? So start telling your friends, don't you dare close that, right? because I want it. Okay? It also means that periodically it's a good time to restart the machines and make sure that the distributed rendering actually shows up. I will start when I get here in the mornings restarting every one of the computers before class so that the bulk of them have this running, right? But it doesn't hurt to like 
oh, I'm going to do some rendering. This is a lot of times when I'm not here, right? Go over to the other lab and restart a bunch of the computers. And these little render windows will pop up and you'll be able to use those too. Okay? So it's really worth your time because it will save a bunch. Okay? The other thing that can happen is V-Ray can decide to crap out on you, okay? for lack of a better term. When it does it, it grays out and it looks something like this. So it's quite convenient that this happened to me before I could do the rendering so you can all see this. The good news is V-Ray works as a plugin, which means Rhino still works even though V-Ray's crashed on you. Sometimes V-Ray will come back, sometimes it won't. Um, if it doesn't, like it is right now, you can still go to Rhino and say file save and it will save everything that you currently have. I'm going to do this, but I also know that it's probably going to take five minutes to save this file. So I'm not actually going to be able to do the rendering live with you right now. Um, so I'll do save and then I'll pause the recording and then we'll come back and do the actual rendering and you can see how it turns out. Okay? So this is now finally rendering. I apologize for the crash. Uh, when you have distributed rendering on, you can confirm that it's working because you get more than eight little squares working at a time. Um, it will also show you which computer is attached that's actually doing the rendering. So right now I have computer 21, 1, 9, and 8 all doing renderings for me in, in the numbers in here. So it depends on which computers are available as to which ones are actually going to do the rendering. But you can see that it's going to go through the process a lot faster. We can also see that the, the cloudy sky that I brought in is, is rendering incorrectly. And we're going to let it keep going and, and finish the process. OK? And there it is when it's actually finished uh, with the with the actual sky in the background. <laughs> 